All right, so here it is. My story how I came to Armbien. Here we go. First of all, you may know my name is Werner, or Werner if you prefer an American English accent, or maybe British English too. I actually wrote a script to do this video, but well, I actually recorded it even and had one and a half hours of material. I didn't like it very much. Quality was not so good. But anyway, now a little different. I try to speak freely and I have my little cheat sheet here so I don't forget health for even more and also to keep things a little in order. You may recognize my voice from the Army Quick Start Guide. That's a, co a collaboration I did with Nico D. Uh, where I donated my voice for. I also wrote that script for that, but it was a little easier without having to stir in the camera out in the woods. All right, I am not sure how this, how well this will work, so I apologize beforehand if this video has a lot of cuts in. I try to avoid, but yeah, we will see how, it, how well it goes. So, you may have seen videos from Nico D, from Igor, and from Lane, how they came to the project or what uh, they do at the project and I think they all did it inside so the only thing I could came, come up with is do it outside think different trademark yeah that is why we are here somewhere in the middle of nowhere all right a little backstory beforehand um, I'm a Linux guy since 2003 actually a friend of mine brought me to it that studied informatics and they started pretty early with Linux their first and also my first distribution was uh, Debian Sarge which was testing back then, I think, version 3.1. Uh, Debian Woody 3.0 was stable. Um, since then, basically, I tried a couple of different distributions uh, over the years. Ubuntu, of course, which my first version was Debra Drake, I think, which also was uh, the very first LTS version of them. I think back then they had two, three years of desktop maintenance and five years for servers. I also used Gentoo quite a while, but everything took ridiculously long to compile and I, get I got tired of that. Which is kind of weird if you think about it because I actually enjoyed FreeBSD quite a lot. A few years ago I had a small mail server uh, running on FreeBSD which was great. Back then EasyJails was still supported. I could easily route the traffic in between with PF which was also a pretty cool syntax for a firewall. I liked it. OpenSUSE I tried every couple of years and always managed to break it. You may ask, hey, what about Slackware? What about Slackware? Well, I guess I'm the only person in this universe that entirely skipped on Slackware. Shame on me. Ultimately though, uh, I went back to uh, Debian or Debian based like Ubuntu, but mostly because of convenience. Okay, my first SPC. Or well, actually, somewhere in turn of the year 16 to 17, I learned about uh, Pi-hole. Uh, which in a nutshell is basically a DNS resolver you can uh, run locally with built-in ad blogger. Thought, yeah, that, that's cool. But instead of that what normal people would do and simply buy a Raspberry Pi, I had no idea why, but I ordered an orange Pi, I guess because of the price point, because it was uh, 10 dollars, uh, 10 US dollars back then. Yeah, that arrived a couple of weeks later. And then I had to learn how this thing even works, because I had Virtually no idea about SPCs or RM architecture, which is kind of crazy if you think about it, because uh, you hold in your hand RM, RM architecture every day. Probably even right now when you watch this video on your smartphone, it's all RM tech, uh, architecture. Um, anyway, so I had to learn that you need a micro SD card, you need an operating system on it, you need to flash it. I had no clue. So did a bit of search and then uh, actually came to DietPy. They supported that board and they also had a description how to write it to an SD card. Um, yeah, so I installed it, put Pi, Pi, Pi hole on top of it. And well, that was basically the rest for the year. A few months later, I had the idea I need to get an Orange Pi One Plus because the specs they read just awesome. An H6 SOG uh, quad core 64 bit, so RM64, um, 1.8 gigahertz, and 1 gigabytes of memory. When I received that board and looked around for US, I guess Igor would say I made contact with reality. You know, vendors claim a lot.
when selling their boards. But elaborating that further, this is simply out of scope of this video and would be very boring, very long. Maybe you should ask Igor to do that. Igor? Anyway, Dietpai did not support this board. Actually, they did not support the H6 SOG at all. Uh, and even in the meantime, they dropped support for all Orange Pi boards. Right. So I had to keep looking. And then I came across, well, you guessed it, Armbian. I came to Armbian as the commoditized noob, like many others come. Started a few stupid questions, um, which were actually not really stupid if you think about it, from today's point of view. They were just a result uh, in lacking basic knowledge. So. I did that and while also starting to tinker with the build framework and do a few things, especially for the H6, uh, I also started involving myself in the discussions, uh, last but not least also in forum related, so how to improve things and that I also had a bit of background in forum administration. What did I skip? I did not skip. Yeah, at this point we could theoretically wrap it up. But let's keep going. For the H6 SOG, at this point, barely anything was mainlined. So there was there were experimental support at most. The vendor provided image, well, it somehow worked, but it was just garbage, you know. The common garbage vendor provided images. So, hey, if you are a vendor and want to sell dirt cheap boards, here's a tutorial for you. First. Grab the most recent outdated, take note, this is important, outdated LTS kernel source you can find. Put a bare minimum of effort into it to get all hardware functions somehow running and then forget about it. Yeah, that's it. Continue with forums. I actually don't remember why and how I became uh, admin in the Armium forum, but I assume I had some somewhere between whatever, I don't know, uh, a chat with Igor or Lane or both, maybe they remember, I didn't ask. And then, since then, I basically did my thing in forum. So, besides the standard moderation, so moving uh, stuff from A to B, some, sometimes editing posts and helping users to help us, mostly, by providing logs or you know the common stuff you read from myself. Yeah, besides that, I uh, also made contact to InVision, which is our form software at the moment, so to get things fixed that have been laying around for partially for years. And I think that worked also pretty well. All right, next topic, IRC. That must have been somewhere 2020, I guess somewhere mid-2020. Uh, Armbian had, up to that point, an unofficial IRC channel at Freenode uh, for years. Uh, Igor said they tried to get control of it and make it official, but they, for some reason they failed and uh, simply for, uh, forget about it. So I thought to myself, that should have been possible. So I got in touch with Freenode stuff. Yeah, just a few days later, I got control over the channel. Uh, I got control of the entire namespace. And from that point forward, we had an uh, official IRC channel. A few months later, that mo uh, one moved uh, to LiberaChat since that, well, let's say that kind of uh, hostile takeover at Freenode, where basically all staff members resigned and also switched over to Libera, which they even found it to that point of view. Um, just Google for it, uh, Google for Andrew Lee and Freenode, and I get you should get a lot of information about that. Special shout out at this point to the former Freenode and now Libera stuff, especially to Jack Frost, aka Unit 193. Salute you. Thank you very much for taking care of us. For IRC, I added a few bots later on also, uh, like Army and GitHub. Hmm. Wanna tell something? Army and GitHub, which basically was a GitHub feed that posted all activity on GitHub into a channel, Armian RSS, which was a Twitter and forums feed, into another channel, and the Armian Helper, which was a kind of all-purpose bot. Some uh, special to mention is a translation feature. So if you put two dots in front of your message, um, it will translate from any input language uh, to English by querying a Google API, uh, which became very handy at uh, release meetings, for example. So people can simply write in their na native language and let the bot do the rest. 
excuse me. So besides boards, at this point I have to cheat. What I collected in the meantime, uh, actually a couple of Orange Pi 1s, because they were a good equivalent to the Orange Pi Zero, but without crappy Wi-Fi, uh, but with HDMI, which I never used. And it was powered to DC barrel jack instead of a crappy micro USB. Yeah, I got a couple of that one. I got another Orange Pi 1 Plus, which to that point uh, ran better. So it was uh, really usable to that point um, for yeah, mo more or less plain server um, stuff, which I mostly do with my SPCs. I don't have any that run desktop. An Anupai Neo 3, which was an awesome board, but it later died on me. It's very cool to do a simple uh, network access storage because it had a USB 3, it's a, a gigabit ethernet, uh, one or two gigabytes of memory and a rock chip quad core in a very small form factor. It's a great board for that purpose. No other useless features, just that. And NanoPi R4S, that was one of the boards when I saw them, I just knew I need to have it because it got the uh, RK3399 hexa core CPU, four gigabytes of memory, dual gigabit ethernet and dual USB 3. What a beast. And it would even run OpenWRT. So you couldn't take an uh, overkill router with it. A station P1, which was, which is uh, in a nutshell, a T Flyerfly Rock RK3399 PC Plus uh, with a nice metal case welded around, which actually does, does pretty good job at cooling the thing. Um, that one runs for quite a while now, until today, uh, as my cheap network access storage, because as mentioned, the Neo 3 died on me and runs pretty well. I had a Kados Wim 3L, um, but I did not have really a use for it, so um, I passed it on to Ricardo to um, continue software de development for it. And he is kind of an I'm logic guy. A Pinebook Pro I had a few months. I actually bought that one from a fellow from Twitter. Unfortunately, it did not make me as happy as I was hoping for. Um, so I offered it to the Army development team. So if somebody could improve support for it or tinker with it, play with it. And ultimately I sent it to Belgium, to Nico D, uh, which was pretty hyped about, learned that it was on its way. And he did even an unboxing, uh, as he said, probably his first and last one. Well, up to this point, it was his last one. Yeah, and he still totally loves it. Um, I I'm glad that he loves it. It's I think that, that was a great idea. In exchange, I got an Outrate N2 for him, from him to play with. It's actually laying on the shelf at the moment because I have no real use for it. But it's also a pretty decent board. From the uh, performance here, you could kind of compa compare it with the uh, RK3399, uh, but uh, on I'm Logic. Don't know, is this the S922X or... I, I don't know. I, I didn't uh, play with it for qu uh, quite a while now, so I, I don't know it, its exact specs. It isn't, isn't important either. And an Orange Pi Zero 2, which was actually given me by Igor to play with, but that board basically had the very same issue uh, like the H6 based boards had in the beginning. Barely any support for it, vendor image, just crap. And that one also lies on the shelf for one and a half years or so, I think. But we are slowly getting to a point where it, it's usable, I think. Uh, from, from the last things I read on forums, I think Legacy broke, doesn't boot, uh, but current boots at the moment. I think. Need to try something. Right, so that's for my board collection. What do we have left? Discord! That was a thing. That wasn't actually my idea. That was Rich Nee's idea. Uh, shout out to you, I hope you're doing well, buddy. And he, yeah, he created a Discord. And I, I had no intention to make it somehow official or something. So it was just kind of a backup solution uh, for convenience. Uh, added a bridge board for it, so um, RMB and channels on IRC and on Discord are linked together. So if you see weird messages from a user called BridgeBot in Discord, you know where they come from. A little later, Rich left project for a while and trans uh, handed over the Discord server to Lane, which was one of the four guys uh, besides uh, Igor, Tony and myself who had uh, admin rights back then. Then uh, Lane transferred it over to me 
because for once I uh, Lane didn't want to have it anyways and for the other I tried to make it official so to get it verified by Discord but uh, up to this point and a few attempts I wasn't successful doing that yeah that was basically it uh, that's my responsibilities forums IRC and Discord I did some work on the documentation as well, so removing outdated stuff, uh, shifting things around, tons of cosmetics. Mostly when I, when somebody uh, does a PR on, on docs, I, I merge that. And last thing to do is basically say a big thank you to everyone that donates to Armbian with either their time, cash, knowledge or expertise. And of course thank you for watching this video. I hope it wasn't too boring. Or if you have too much boredom, uh, just check out some of you of Nico D's other videos. Uh, he does, does some pretty cool road trip stuff. So he went with his bike to Netherlands, for example, uh, did camping and so on. It was pretty cool. That's, that's it. Cut. So that was Werner from Armbian. Thank you for watching. Big thank you to Werner for making this video. See you all later. Bye.